May we wish you the very merriest of Christmases and the happiest of New Years. And thank you so very much for letting us spend this Christmas with you. Oh, you got to love some Christmas music, right? That voice you heard, Phil Spector, and his version of Silent Night from maybe my favorite Christmas album of all time, Phil Spector's A Christmas Gift to You. That record was first released on November 22nd, 1962. Coincidentally, that was the same day JFK was shot in Dallas, Texas. One reason why that record was not a success until much later on in Phil Spector's career. Also with us on set to talk about Christmas music, Nick Tate co-author of Da Vinci's Baby Boomer Survival Guide. And Nick, we don't talk about Baby Boomer Survival Guides and health. We talk a lot about music together. Yes, we do. And we also have joining us right now DJ at 95.5 PLJ in New York City, Ralphie Averza. Ralphie, thanks for being with us as well. My pleasure. All right, we all love Christmas music. Even Phil Spector, who was the son of Jewish immigrants, loved Christmas music as well. And it does sell very well. One of my favorite songs on the record, including the Ronettes singing I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus, is the classic, the only original song on that Phil Spector album, Darling Loves Christmas Baby Please Come Home. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Ralphie, where does this rank on your list of uh, all-time greats for Christmas records? I mean, it's right up there. I mean, when I hear a lot of those songs on that record, especially as you mentioned, the Rod Nats, Frosty the Snowman, I think of Goodfellas and that scene where they're having oh, a yeah. Christmas party after the big heist, and uh, Jimmy is telling everyone to take, stop showing off the money. Uh, so I definitely think of uh, the Rod Nats, and I think of that Phil Spector-produced album a great deal, right up there with a lot of the more contemporary stuff. Sure. Uh, that we've uh, certainly been blessed to hear over the past five to ten years. Sure. And Nick, we talked also about uh, one of your favorites, not just because of the quality of the music, but because of the weirdness <laughs> involved as well. David Bowie's rendition of Little Drummer Boy with none other than Bing Crosby. We have some video of that, but tell us about some what you learned about that. Strangest matchup maybe in history for music, uh, Christmas music. Turns out that uh, David, Cro uh, David uh, Bowie did not want to sing this song, Little Drummer Boy, and an hour or two before they filmed, he said, I'm not doing it. So the writers had to come up with the second piece, which was Peace on Earth, that complements Bing Crosby's croon of Little Drummer Boy, and it's just, it's, it's weirdness and magical all at once. Ralphie, another common theme of these Christmas songs is you may not like the music, I mean, my parents, even though they were from New York and Pennsylvania, they always played Alabama's Christmas album. So I, I love the album, even though I'm not a, a huge fan of Alabama. But uh, it's about memories with Christmas albums. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. 110%. Whether you remember hearing these songs as you're shopping or, of course, your family constantly play them this time of year. Uh, I think, and that goes certainly with, with any music, any songs, but especially uh, this particular genre of music, because we associate these Christmas songs with gathering with family and friends this time of year. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, and what is your favorite all time? I know you said the uh, Phil Spector album's right up there, but your number one, if you only could listen to one Christmas song or one album, what would it be? Uh... Probably, I, I got to go with Paul McCartney. Paul, Paul McCartney, without question, his, uh, his big Christmas hit. I think I'd have to go with that one. All right. Well, there's a lot of great ones out there. To each his own this Christmas season. Nick Tate, Ralphie Averza, thanks so much for being with us.